Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachah Kurash. The name of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh Bahasham, and the name of Yahweh Shai, the name of the only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahasham, and the name of Rachah Kurash, the Holy Spirit, which inspires us and in these latter days has entered into the souls of holy men to go out and preach this word. All right, the new song, so that the remnant can be brought back to the Most High through the sacrifice of Yahawashai, all right, by us preaching this word in sincerity and truth, all right? And um, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well, and as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. I wanted to do a quick response to this elders video um, as you can see here, I just got through watching this live stream. 400 years, numerology, rebuke. No man knoweth the day nor hour. All right. And the YouTube page is GMS Walk and Talk SC. All right. Make sure you subscribe to the elders page so that you're edified. All right. Um, and as he quotes here um, in the description, 1 Timothy 4 and 1, now the spirit speaketh expressly. <laughs> Meaning this is the, the spirit is harping on this. That in the latter times, Shum shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. All right. And um, the doctrine he's dealing with is that, you know, uh, the 400 years prophesied in the book of Genesis, the uh, 15th chapter where Abraham had a dream, which we'll get into, was speaking of America. And that's uh, far from the truth. And it's simple. It's a very simple breakdown as you read the chapter. You know, now uh, this video was in response to this comment uh, where you had a guy named D'Angelo, D'Anglo, D'Anglo Berth Berthwell. OK, he uh, posted a comment, you know, on the video where the brother was going into numerology and how it's not profitable. Now, we know that numerology, even the alphabet. All right. The Hebrew alphabet. There's particular meanings and vibrations and everything that go with, with letters, sounds, tones, numbers. All right. But as the scriptures say, okay, the scriptures say, and this is the book of uh, Sirach, the third chapter, in the 21st verse, it says, seek not out the things that are too hard for thee. All right. Because a lot of you haven't even sincerely fully repented. We're all a work in progress. Okay. There are particular things that we know are true, metaphysics, all right? But to, to try to tap into those things and make doctrines out of them, you make a fool of yourself. We'll get all of that understanding back, including the understanding of, you know, um, the Zodiac and everything on the right-hand side when we get the kingdom, man. When we get those new bodies, we're going to know everything. Right now, we were given a job, and that job is to repent, all right, teach this word, okay, and prepare to be delivered out of Babylon the Great, man. Okay, offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice. Do what we can to help. Do what? Build the tabernacle of David so we can get the hell up out of this hellhole, man. Okay, prophesying. A lot of you don't even fully understand the prophecies, yet you want to jump into these hard and deep things that you don't, you, you don't understand, man. And you end up bugging yourself out and choking at the word where until you were appointed. All right, now if he repents or not, that's not up to me. But we, our job is to ultimately do these videos so we can put you brothers and sisters in the right mind frame, man. We'll get all of those things, man. In the kingdom of heaven, okay, we're, we're going to look at a stone. We're going to know what's in the stone, what, you know, what, <laughs> what elements and properties went in. We're going to know everything. You see? But right now, we don't have all of that understanding. Okay? We'll get it all back, man. Okay, the scriptures say, hardly do we guess aright at the things on the earth, man. But the things of the spirit who have known, except the understanding be sent from on high. And we have a whole hell of a lot in the form of this doctrine that, been, that has been sent from on high, man, that, that outweighs you trying to be so goddamn deep. Seek, out not, seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search out the things that are above thy strength. But what is commanded thee, think thereon with reverence. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. You see that? But what is commanded of thee, okay? What, what was commanded of us, man? 
Okay, to fear Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, keep the commandments to the best of our ability through faith in Yahweh Shai, man. Offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice, separate from this current world to the best of our ability, be upstanding citizens of the nation of Israel, love our brothers, okay, uh, uh, and sisters, all right, and, and, and do the things that are conducive to getting the kingdom because we're in a low state and this is not our rest, okay? So the things that are commanded to you, think they're upon with reverence. You were commanded to hearken unto the prophets. And a lot of you are trying to constantly come up with ways to out-deep the prophets, man. You see? To, to, to combat the prophets. And this is what Moses went through. It says, For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in unnecessary matters, man. Okay? It's not that uh, uh, numbers don't have particular spiritual meanings and connotations the lord deals with numerology all right four seven there's you know one fourth all of those things have spiritual uh meanings and connotations man but it's unnecessary for us to try to go into each of those numbers and figure out though this is what the scribes and pharisees were doing with the law they would take letters out of the hebrew alphabet within particular laws and make laws on the on the letter going too far doing too much shutting up the kingdom of heaven be not curious in unnecessary matters for more things are showed unto thee than men understand you know you're an israelite you see that's more than <laughs> the, 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 the millions of israelites on this earth man and that's a blessing within itself but you 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 israelites don't even really think upon with reverence that you have been uh, waking up to the fact that you're an Israelite. You find out you're an Israelite and you just try to go find every book and be deep and lose your goddamn mind, man. Talking about some 227. That guy was tripping when you read this comment. I'm not going to read the whole comment, but if you see here, if you looked up the theme song of the TV show called 227, 11, if you add it up, you'll see how they sh show you... Uh, paired couple exactly 11 times along with the length of the video one-on-one -on -one for the number 11 so now they're using that number for the black race see that's too much man and you just know his eyes was wide open when he was typing his comment man like jake with the the magic mushroom doctrine like what are you doing man <laughs> the, the 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 at the end of the day the manna from heaven is symbolic of Yahawashai, this understanding that's coming down. That's more important than you trying to figure out what texture the, 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 the manna was. The manna was something they had never seen before, man. You telling me they ain't seen mushrooms before that time? Come on, man. So you, you, you brothers are out there going too far, man. And then you get offended when we rebuke you, man. But this is our job. This is what Moses had to go through. This is what Yahweh had to go through. So this is our duty. This is a part of being a sacrifice, man. All right. This is an investment. And Lord will, if the investment pays off. But you're supposed to think they're on with reverence, man. Let's look up that word reverence real quick. You're supposed to think up on what is commanded of you once you find out you're an Israelite with reverence, man. We'll get into the whole 400 year thing as well reverence <laughs> and a lot of you don't really have reverence for for yahweh yahweh Shah or his prophets man you try to bring that same vibration from the world into israel man who made you a judge over me that spirit all right reverence deep respect for some someone or something all right rituals honor to show reverence for the dead now nah, we don't need that one but ultimately that's it man deep respect man you're supposed to have deep respect for this word that you've received man and you don't show your deep respect from coming and challenging the prophets and just going if, if <laughs> all you know all left going east west south north to just try to find some new uh, uh deep seven deep breakdown man and make a fool of your damn self so you're supposed to would come would would, would uh, think what has been commanded upon you with reverence man and you hear what is commanded of you through the scriptures through the prophets which are to tell you these things 
Be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are showed unto you than men understand. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. Okay, and you, you, and, and and we've seen this year after year after year after year, man. And those guys who try to get super deep, they're no longer here. They're no longer around, man. You had guys that used to the the reason your Howard Shah's eyes are red is because he came from this region of the earth and this and this and that. He drunk this, but he, he they they would go too deep. Everything was 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 just too deep, man. And we remember these guys, man. When we started up and got into the conference calls, man. You would have guys come in there with, it's just too deep, bro. Like, calm down, bro. How fast is the chariot? How fast can the missile go? How this? Just, bro, calm down, man. Because at the end of the day, Sirach 14 and 17, the Lord have not given power to the saints to declare all of his marvelous works. Okay? We've been given power to declare this mighty gospel. Okay? To, to uh, 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 preach these prophecies, man. Okay, all of these technicals and things like that, we'll get that back once we get the understanding, man. Because our legacy, <laughs> at the end of the day, we were from the beginning with Yahweh Shai, creating all of these elements and doing all of these things. So we'll get all of that understanding back after we fulfill our, our, our lot, man. Okay, we'll, we'll, hey, there's a glory. Hey, the scriptures talk about we go from glory to glory. There's another glory than this uh, uh, flesh. See, right now we have this wisdom in these earthen vessels, man, fighting to get back in good graces with our power through his son. But once we get back, man, we're going to know everything. We're going to even know as we are, are made. We're going to know everything the scriptures say, man. So right now is not the time to try to boast in, in, in the things that you yourself don't truly understand. We preach this gospel. The Lord have not given power to the saints to declare all his marvelous works. <laughs> See? which the almighty Lord firmly settled that whatsoever is might be established for his glory, man. Okay. So he's given us this gospel. Okay. The hundred percent truth of this gospel to go out and preach in these latter days, man. Okay. Cause as you can see, this is unprofitable. This is vain jangling, man. Okay. And this leads to no edification. You see that long comment? It was a it was a, a brain twister, bro. You talking about two two seven? Like what 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 are you doing, man? So so basically, he's saying with the four hundred year prophecy in Exodus the fifteenth chapter, when you add it up, slavery is gonna be up in twenty twenty two because the sixteen nineteen the twenty nineteen that doctrine didn't work. It failed, you know. In which we didn't make a big deal out of it, but it didn't work. It didn't. It. It. it you know. You seen that those who were boasting in that kind of went silent. So now I'm guessing there's a new doctrine. Well, it, it's going to come in 2022, not 2019. All right. But at the end of the day, let's just quickly get into this. All right. Because all of that vain talk and, and, and jangling, and lead, it, it doesn't lead to edification, man. We, we are supposed to edify, man, one another. You confusing the flock with that madness, man. And to top it off, you sitting there with your shirt off, man, trying to show you a six-pack. With that plenty of fish profile picture, man. <laughs> and I ain't, you know... If the and if you sincere, you just got demons on because we all got demons on us, man. We all filled with poison. We, we you know, we've come from different backgrounds of life, so but come on, bro. This is too much. All right, this is too damn much. Okay, this is Genesis 15 and 12. <laughs> oh man. It says, um, and when the sun was going down. A deep sleep fell upon Abram. This is before his name was changed to Abraham. And lo, a ho and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto him, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now, as you know, the scriptures say we were in Egypt four hundred and thirty years. Now. The understanding on that, real briefly, is that Jacob, Joseph, 
all right, and so forth. They were in Egypt already before Exodus, the first chapter, because when you read Exodus, the first chapter, that's when the affliction starts. Because Joseph had uh, favor amongst Egypt. Okay? The, the, as it tells you, uh, uh, Jacob and his sons had already been in Egypt, man. And they were fruitful and multiplying. But the thing is here in verse 8, Exodus 1 and 8. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, with, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. So this is where the affliction started. So before the 400-year slavery period started, Israel was already in Egypt. The 400-year is speaking of the hardcore bondage that we had to undergo. All right, now, a lot of people like to uh, liken that to Babylon the Great America because the, 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 the term 400 years is always understood that we were here close to that amount of time, even unto this day, catching hell, right? Since around 1619, which technically you already had Israelites over here before that, okay? <laughs> you, you had uh, the, the, the tribe of Gad and then the 10 tribes that were already put in subjection, okay? But ultimately, 1619 was when Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, even a little bit before that, were brought over here on those cargo slave ships to serve hardcore bondage, man. Now, spiritually, we know that we can link it in spirit because this is a spiritual Egypt. Real quick. This is Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So this is a spiritual Egypt. So, yeah, you can link that. Yeah, we served hardcore bondage in Egypt under uh, Pharaoh. But who's the modern day Pharaoh? So you can link things spiritually, but this scripture, okay, there's a lot of ways you can link things that were happening in Egypt to what's happening in this Egypt, because this is the modern day Egypt, which is ran by Esau Edom. You see? So yeah, we can link, you know, Planned Parenthood, how they tried to slay our children, how our people was given Moses and, and Aaron, which were the leaders, hell, same thing happening here today. Okay, how Moses and Aaron spoke plagues upon Egypt. Same thing happening here today. The Lord is speaking through Moses and Aaron. Same thing happening here today with the prophets. Okay, who are preaching this word, who are, who are prophesying the downfall of Babylon the Great. So there's many ways you can spiritually link the captivity of Egypt to this captivity. All right, but this scripture here in Genesis, the 15th chapter, is speaking directly of ancient Egypt. And let's prove it. Okay, And he said unto Abram, know of a surety, uh, Genesis 15 and 13, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years, right? And also that nation whom they serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance, Okay. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. So this is speaking of Abraham, meaning you're going to pass away and be buried, right? But how are we going to get the promise, right? It says, but in the fourth generation shall they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet fulfilled. This right here, which, we, which we'll get into it briefly, shows you that this is speaking of that ancient Egypt, man. Goodness gracious. Now, we came out of ancient Egypt with great substance. Exodus 12 and 35, And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels and silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And when you look it up in the Josephus, a lot of the Egyptians, you know, when they saw the power that was dealing with us, you know, they turned, they, they you know, uh, started giving, giving us things like, go ahead, take this, get the hell up out of here. Your God is, you know, putting holy hell upon us, man. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians, man. So, yeah, we left out of ancient Egypt with, with silver and jewels and gold. And now Jake is saying <laughs> in this Egypt, 
which this is going to be a second Passover, we're going to leave out with gold. Like, we're going to get on the airplane, okay, with gold and silver, back suitcases full of, full of gold and silver and all of that. That ain't, that ain't what that's talking about, man. First of all, when we're delivered out of this new Egypt, we're going to be beamed up into them ships. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Isaiah 31. Because this is the new Passover that's coming. Isaiah 31 and 5. As birds flying, so will Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, defend Jerusalem. Defending it, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. That word for passing over, okay, is what? Pot, pash, pashak, which is basically the Passover, man. To pass over. So the, this, this deliverance that we're going to when we get delivered out of the land of the north which is babylon the great and all of the different nations where we were uh scattered will be likened unto a passover it's the second passover this is why jeremiah 16 tells you we're no longer even going to speak about the deliverance from egypt but the deliverance from the land of the north because this land of the north okay is modern day egypt but it's in spirit okay so in the kingdom the passover will be celebrating the deliverance out of Babylon the Great and all of the various different captivities where we were scattered, man. Okay? Now, when we get delivered out of this new Egypt, we're not going to need any gold or silver. We're going to, the world, first of all, the world is getting ready to be ours. So what, will we, what can we take from here that we can take on the chariot and say this is of any value? When we get beamed up we're going to get new bodies we won't need anything of this world the world has to be changed back into righteousness under the law statutes and commandments man okay now all of the riches of the the gentiles and all of that everything will be transferred over to us so we won't have to try and leave out of america now here it is your your flesh is going to disintegrate you're not going to need this flesh but what are, what are you going to have the gold at where are you going to have the silver at like you, a lot of you think you're going to sneak your favorite sandwich and burrito and everything up on the chariot. You go get up on the chariot. Look what I got. You on a chariot, man. Look at this piece of gold, man. You're going to have a whole new body. The fashion of this world, we won't need that. See, that that was in ancient Egypt where we left out with great substance. Let's get that in Psalms 105 real quick. Psalms 105 and 37, he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among the tribes. How much more in this time when we get delivered, okay, uh, uh, back to our father and get those new bodies, man. Egypt was glad when they departed for the fear of them that fell, fell upon them, man. He spread a cloud for a covering, all right, and fire to give light by the night, which was that angel in the wilderness, which was Yahawashai. So as we go back here, what nation, and I guarantee you, if you ask these Jakes these basic questions, they wouldn't know what nation of people were inhabiting the Holy Land as we were leaving Egypt. The Canaanites, all right, the, 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 the Kinzanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Amorites, right? Let's read this again, man. Because you guys are something else, man. <clears throat> so let's read start over from the top and he said unto abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them all right and they shall afflict them 400 years soon as jake see that 400 years they this america see <laughs> there's various problems we can go to that speak on our captivity here in America, but this ain't one of them. You can link it spiritually, but this ain't talking about that. And also that nation whom they shall serve, will I judge, and he did judge the Egyptians, and afterward they shall come out with great substance, we just read about that, and, shall, and thou, Abram, shall go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shall be buried in a good old age, right? Because he would pass away. So the vision he saw was something that would happen in the future after he passed away, right? <laughs> but in the fourth generation, 
shall they come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. What does this mean? What does this mean? The Amorites were one of many nations of Hamites who were in the Holy Land doing absolute wickedness, man. Okay? In the book of Leviticus, let me see here. When you get the book of Leviticus, real, let me get it real quick. I had it written down. The book of Leviticus chapter, I believe, 21. Let's see here. Leviticus chapter 18 and Leviticus 20, right? They describe in detail what the inhabitants of the land were doing prior to God vomited them out of the land in Israel under Joshua taking over. You see that? We didn't fully get that land, which we didn't get it because of ultimately, you know, prophecy. But it was under Joshua we would, we would finally, Joshua and Caleb, well, we would finally get to the point where the Lord was like, all right, go and take it. But before that, who was there? The Amorites. And what were they doing? Idultery, wickedness. Okay? As a matter of fact, when you get Leviticus 18, It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where Egypt wherein ye dwelt, ye shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you where they were going, ye shall not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Okay? Ye shall do my uh, judgments and keep my ordinances. To walk therein, I am the Lord your God. Okay. And when these, when when he starts giving these uh, laws, he's basically speaking against what they were doing. S sleeping with uh, uh, it says, "Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahweh. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin unto him." To uncover their nakedness, for I am the Lord. This is what those Hamites were doing in the Holy Land. And we'll get that in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, man. So you telling me, when you read Genesis, the 15th chapter, after this 400 years, the, 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 <laughs> the Amorites are the ones who are in the Holy Land right now? Right now, who's in the Holy Land? Amalek, all right, Ishmael and Elam mixed. Okay? But in, in, in particular, the Amalekites, the so-called Jews are over there. The Hamites, the Amorites not over there right now, man. But they were over there in control of the Holy Land at this time. Which we'll get that history in Wisdom of Solomon to show you, man. All right? So he starts speaking against the, the, the things that they were doing, man. The nakedness of thy son. This is what Ham was doing. Okay? basically sleeping with their sister and just doing all sorts of wickedness man sleeping with daughter and just oh my goodness man <laughs> hey you shall not lie uh, thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination okay and thou shall not let any of thy seed pass through the fire of Molech child sacrifice this is what those Amorites Canaanites this is what they were doing and you can read from Le Leviticus 18 to 20, and it gives you an understanding of what those particular nations were doing in our land. Okay? Now, remember, this is a story. So, yeah, there was another nation that had control of our land. And we were uh, commanded, okay, to, to as we went there, to kill our asses off. That's in uh, the book of Deuteronomy 20. And 16, but of these, but of the city of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. <laughs> All right. A lot of people talk about it. There was a mixed multitude that came out with it. But what was ultimately, what was the, uh, 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 the narrative? Put all of their asses to death. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites 
and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and the Lord as the Lord thy God have commanded thee. Let's look up the Amorites. Amorai. A sayer, one of the people of East Canaan and beyond Jordan dispossessed by the Israelite incursion from Egypt. So Genesis, the 15th chapter, is giving Abraham the history of what would undergo the children of Israel as they left out of the land of Egypt to go into the land of Canaan, okay? Because at that time that Abraham was alive, he was dwelling amongst the Canaanites, amongst the Amorites, all right? And they hadn't yet fulfilled their wickedness. The Lord is telling him in the future, all right, their wickedness is going to be fulfilled. And then that curse that was put up on them, all right, curse be Canaan, can actually be fulfilled. And he would spew them out of that land, man. But there was a lot of iniquity that they would have to fulfill. See, everything happens in its particular uh, uh, order, man. Okay, this has to happen, that has to happen. Now, at that time, all right, all of that wickedness that we read about in Leviticus, the uh, 18th through 20th chapter, it hadn't yet been fulfilled, man. This is Genesis 12 and 6. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. You see that? And the Canaanite was then in the land. But that's actually Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's land and their seed, right? <laughs> But there would be a process into how they would get that land. Okay? And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto them. You see that? So the Lord is telling him, I'm going to give you this land, man. Let's see if we can find another precept where the Lord promised him that land. You can look that up. Yep, Genesis 13. In 15 okay and for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth Israel will be as the sand of the sea but only a remnant will return through the faith all right of Abraham all right so that a if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered man arise walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it for I will give it unto thee and Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre which is Hebron and built there he an altar unto Yahweh. but you see at that point okay the Amorites were already in the land you can see them mentioned right here in Genesis the 14th chapter and this is where Melchizedek blesses Abraham all right, and that's a whole nother lesson. But then you get to Genesis 15. He just has a dream. <laughs> he just has a dream down here. Starting at 13 again. And he said unto Abram, Know for a surety that thy seed, which shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, all right, and shall serve them, that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Okay? And that nation whom the uh and that and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, all right, because when you die your spirit returns unto the spirit world. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age, meaning he would live a long life. And he had Isaac to pass that promise down to. All right. He had Isaac to pass that promise down to when he was around 90 years old, man. You see, that's why he was so happy when, when Isaac was born, because that was the one who that promise of that land would be passed down to. And then through Isaac, it went down to Jacob. You see? These are things you have to know before you go spewing out this talking about the 400 year prophecy and you don't know, man. But in the fourth generation, 
they they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full so in the fourth generation which Moses and Aaron were the fourth from Levi okay uh, 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 Caleb the fourth from Judah if you want to go generations wise that's ultimately when we would go and get into that land around that time would it be fulfilled the Lord would be like alright enough is enough now I'm going to put in a plan and start bringing plagues and you know ultimately enough will be enough all right, because the Lord does everything by measure. Okay, this is a uh, second Edris four. Okay, second Edris four, and let's see here. In thirty-five, did not the souls also of the righteous acts? question of these things in their chamber saying how long shall I hope on this fashion when cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward and unto these things Uriel the archangel gave them answer and said even when the number of seeds is filled in you for you have weighed the world in the balance meaning you're going to have to come back in particular incarnations until the very last one then the prophets will get their reward and we believe this is that time even when the number of seeds is filled in you he's telling this to Ezra's so Ezra's is here for he have weighed the world in a balance by measure hath he measured the times and by number hath he numbered the times and he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled so the Amorites had to fulfill their wickedness Okay, before at that time the Lord would allow the Israelites to go into that land and to possess it. But we know <laughs> that Jake went off and it wasn't fully fulfilled at that time. It's going to be fulfilled in this time through us, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who will return, okay, through faith. Now, let's get into a little history here in the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter. All right, it says, uh, for thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. Okay, the Lord controls all of this, man. Therefore, chasteneth thou them little by little that offend and warnest them by putting them in remembrance when they have offended that leaving their wickedness they may believe on thee, O Lord. For it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers both those old inhabitants of thy holy land those old inhabitants of thy holy land that 400 year period and that history that was given to Abraham in that dream was speaking of what happened in that time the Amorites possessed the land in that time the Canaanites possessed the land in that time now in spirit we have the Amalekites which they were you know wiggling around too but they they're the ones who possess it in this time Hey, as the scriptures say, Ezekiel 36 and 2, thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy have said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. <laughs> and that's what they think. They got everything. They got the records. They can lie. They, they hide things, but it's all coming out, man jump to verse 5 for time's sake therefore uh, thus said the Lord God surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea which have appointed my land into their possession see that all of the heathen but who does it specifically speak of Idumea okay which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey okay so in 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 prophecy it would be Esau Edom who would have control of the Holy Land okay we only possessed that land for a little time man <laughs> we had the shortest lived you know kingdom of all of the, the rulers of the earth man Isaiah 63 and 17 oh Yahweh why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear return for thy servants sake for the tribes of thine inheritance 
the people of thy holiness have possessed it what the holy land but a little while i mean even solomon that was 40 years of peace that was it our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary you see that the adversaries would have control various different nations had the land all right but in this time it ain't the amorite the canaanite that ain't what that's talking about man so that 400 years wasn't talking about this we are thine thou never bears rule over them they were not called by thy name they ain't the children of the most high god man you see that they ain't the true israelites and the scriptures say that jerusalem will be trodden down of the gentiles until the end of the gentiles rulership came to an end and we're living at the very end of the heathen rulership man but right here this is speaking of the canaanites that cursed seed okay wisdom of solomon 12 and 3 for it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers both those old inhabitants of thy holy land whom thou hatest for doing most odious works of witchcrafts and wicked sacrifices that's what they were doing in the holy land but it had to be fulfilled like it had to get to a point where the lord said all right enough is enough now it's time for y'all to go you know go to that land and take it you see also and also those merciless murders of children abortion clinics and passing the seed through the to molech and through fire that's what they were doing and devourers of men's flesh and feast of blood that's what they were doing with their priest out of the midst of their adulterous crew and the parents that killed with their own hands souls destitute of help <laughs> that the land which thou esteemest above all other that's where he put his name at might receive a worthy colony of God's children so it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers and the Amorites was one of those nations that were destroyed by the hands of our fathers they were the old inhabitants of the holy land man okay <laughs> and he's doing this that the land he did that that the land which he esteemed above all other might receive a worthy colony of God's children it says nevertheless even those who thou spared us as men and did sent wasp all right because the lord said he was gonna send wasp and different things to to drive them at them, them out to spew them out of the land because doesn't the scripture say they would be spewed out of the land See if we can find that scripture real quick maybe i spell spewed wrong yep leviticus 18 and 28 let's get that real quick same chapter we were talking about that describes what they were doing yep leviticus 18 and 27 for all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you and the land is defiled the land was defiled so the lord was like it's time to get their asses up out of there their measure had to have been filled just that was promised to abraham that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it as it spewed out the nations that were before you so that's what that's talking about man okay so he sent wasp and different things and that remember that angel was there as well man okay it says nevertheless even those thou spared us as men and didst send wasp uh, uh forerunners of thine host to destroy them by little and little okay and that's what happened not that thou wast unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle or to destroy them at once with cruel beast or with one rough word see the lord could have ultimately just snapped his fingers in a, these Canaanites and particular nations that were in the Holy Land disappeared but there's a narrative he wants there's a movie he wants okay one thing fulfills another and then this happens everything has to happen in sequence with prophecy in the movie man and Abraham was given that prophecy in the dream but executing thy judgments upon them little by little which is happening to Esau all right thou gavest them a place of repentance meaning while all of these things was happening 
they didn't the, the Egyptians the the Canaanites and all these different names they weren't repenting they were getting more wicked so that the Lord can be destroyed and utterly obliterating their asses man all right not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation all right and that their malice was bred in them and that their uh, cogitation would never be changed. See, the Lord understood that they wasn't going to repent. The Lord understood that they were a wicked, cursed seed. All right? But the story had to play out. All right? Would they stop once they saw the wasp and the power of the Israelites? No, they started doing more wickedness and trying to formulate plans to cast stumbling blocks in front of Israel, and, 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 and it didn't work. But Israel eventually went off. It said, for it was a cursed seed from the beginning. Neither did this thou for fear of any man give them pardon for those things wherein they sinned. And what does the scripture say? Cursed be Canaan, man. <laughs> See that? Going all the way back to here. This curse was fulfilled when they got obliterated out of that land, man. Genesis 9 and 25. And he said, curse be Canaan for a wicked act that they did. Saw, saw his father's nakedness. Okay. <laughs> a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Speaking of what Ham did, his father, man. See that? You can read that history if you would like to but cursed be Canaan so the Lord knew they were cursed and they had to fulfill that curse you see but at the end of the day yep it says cursed be uh, Canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren this wasn't fulfilled let's see Joshua 9 and 23 when they came and when they was going into these lands, they put these particular heathen in captivity. Now, therefore, ye are cursed, and there shall none of you uh, be free from being bondmen and hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. And Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation. They put their asses in captivity for the place for the altar of the Lord, even unto this day, in the place which he should should choose, man. Judges 1 and 28, and it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites in tribute and did utterly drive them out. You see that? And it's more. You know, it's more. You know, it's, it's way more, you know. But that's, that's what that means, man. You know, so clear, clearly we can see that this 400-year period Okay, <laughs> even uh, Stephen brought this up in the book of Acts, man. Let's see if we can get that in the book of Acts. Acts 7 and 6. And God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years, man. And the nation to whom they uh, shall be in bondage will I judge... All right, said God, and after that, they shall come forth and serve me in this place, man. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day, and Isaac begot Jacob, and they begot the 12 patriarchs, man. Okay, and the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. All right, and delivered him out of the inflictions and yada, and it goes into the history, man. You know, but at the end of the day, man, that that ain't talking about America, man. So hopefully it was proven. Hopefully, you know, you brothers and sisters who were were messed up about that, you know, now you have the understanding, man. And Dean Glow, come on, bro, that's too much. So hopefully I were all edified. I'm gonna stop it there. Cause there's so much history and pre precepts and stuff we can go through, but look, look that stuff up on your own and hopefully you were edified. Shalom to the next one.